friends. I thought I'd share some recipes with you today. These will all be linked in the description box below and there will be a written recipe for the soup. But we're going to start out with some chocolate magic custard cake. I've never made this before, but it turned out really, really great. David loved it. But we're starting with four egg yolks, two thirds a cup of granulated white sugar, and a teaspoon vanilla extract that will beat until it's pale and creamy. It took about four, four or five minutes. After that, we poured in some cooled melted butter and I mixed that for an additional minute. Once that's all mixed together, I sifted in some flour and unsweetened cocoa powder. It was uh, three quarters of a cup of flour. It was all purpose. You could also use cake flour and a third of a cup of unsweetened cocoa powder. And that was just one stick of melted butter. And once all that's mixed together, you're gonna slowly mix in two cups of milk that are at room temperature. And the mixture does get fairly thin, um, thinner than I thought it would. So once I scraped down the sides and gave it one last good mix, um, I moved on to the egg whites, which is the other part. So I didn't mention at the beginning, it's four egg yolks. Um, but you are going to want to keep your whites because you will separate those out and you will um, beat those on low speed for about a minute until it starts to fluff up. Then you're going to add in a tablespoon of sugar and half a teaspoon of salt. And you're going to beat those until you have really stiff peaks. I think my beaters were still a little bit wet from where I washed them off. Um, so my peaks weren't real stiff, um, but they worked out just fine. And you don't want to overbeat it because then your whites will curdle. After that, you're going to fold in half of your beaten egg mixture at a time into your prepared batter. And you're going to get that good and mixed up. Just go slowly so you don't knock out any air. You see here I decided to switch to a to a better spatula but once that's all mixed you pour it in an 8x8 cake pan. This will fill up the cake pan to the top so beware. Um, and also don't worry if you see a few specks of egg white on the surface of the batter. Um, it'll look thin and runny even as you pour it in the baking pan but it's it's totally normal. So once that's in the baking pan, I stuck it in the oven at 325 degrees for about 40 minutes. Let it cool on the counter for probably 30 minutes before transferring it to the refrigerator for an hour. I dusted the top with cocoa powder. You could also use powdered sugar and it turned out delicious. You can see the layers and it's really cool. Okay, moving on. This is a recipe that I came up with years ago, just using what we had on hand. Um, I'm starting out with six cups of chicken broth and adding three carrots and three stalks of celery. You can use any vegetables you have on hand. This is just what we prefer. After those have boiled long enough for the carrots to soften, I added um, two boxes of long grain and wild rice. Now, I do prefer Uncle, Uncle Ben's, but I have not been able to find that lately, so I used rice aroni, and you do use the seasoning packets as well. I had a half a bag of leftover quick cooking brown rice so I just went ahead and added that too. Add about three tablespoons of butter but you're going to cook that according to the package directions of the rice. It's about 20 to 25 minutes. You may end up having to add some extra liquid. I did this time but it just depends on how thick you prefer it. We've eaten it super thick almost like a 
a casserole consistency and we've also eaten it like soup um, but here then I'm just adding some rotisserie chicken that I had left over from the freezer you could use any kind of chicken you could use a chicken breast chicken thighs we prefer the rotisserie chicken um, I think it would also be really good with some beef maybe some stew bits um, and beef broth but after it's cooked after the chickens warmed up you're gonna add about three quarters of a cup of heavy whipping cream and stir that around I throw in my salt and pepper right at the end just to be sure that it's not over salted from the seasoning pack um, and then I usually let that sit on the oven on the heat for 10 to 15 minutes um, to let it thicken up a little more and then we served it with French bread and butter and oh man that stuff is delicious it is an excellent fall and winter dinner okay let's make some bagels now this is my first time making sourdough bagels and it is probably one of the easiest sourdough recipes I've ever made so I started with a half a cup of sourdough starter that I had fed earlier in the day so it was real bubbly and active I added two tablespoons of honey two teaspoons of salt and a cup of water then you're gonna add two cups of all-purpose unbleached flour now I do use the paddle for this first section but once that's mixed together it takes about 10 minutes on low speed um, once but once that's come together I switch it out for my dough hook and then you add your other two cups of flour half a cup at a time and let that mix until it comes together about another 10 minutes on low speed the dough is really stiff very difficult to incorporate um, if if you have a mixer like mine it might or might not overheat 18 or 20 times there might be sparks flying from your electrical box but it'll all come together eventually so once the dough is smooth and pliable you're gonna cover it with a wet tea towel or plastic wrap or beeswax and let it ferment for anywhere from 8 to 12 hours mine was about 13 hours all in so the next morning when I was still half asleep I put entirely too much flour on my bench you don't need this much flour if any at all um, you're gonna divide your dough into eight very uneven pieces if you follow my tutorial here but and then you can mix in any mix-ins you want so I went with four plain bagels that I'll add some toppings to and then four cinnamon raisin um, I decided to use this cinnamon toast crunch uh, cinnamon dust um, it turned out really really good I would not recommend putting it on the top like I did before you bake it um, but rather as soon as you pull them out of the oven so all you do is roll the dough into balls and you flatten them down a bit and then you can poke a hole in the middle with your finger and kind of stretch it to widen it and um, flatten them out once all of your bagels are prepared you're going to cover them with a tea towel and let them rise in a warm spot for anywhere from one to four hours until puffy all right once they've risen you're going to bring a pot of water to a boil and add a tablespoon each of baking soda and brown sugar and then add your add your bagels um, you don't want to overcrowd the pan um, but you're going to boil them on each side for about a minute each. Um, I'm so awkward <laughs> getting these in and out of the pan. I was nervous, especially with the 
<clears throat> cinnamon raisin ones because they were much more dense because of the raisins, but they turned out great. So once, once they boiled, transfer them to your baking sheet. Add your toppings. I added sesame seeds to two and poppy seeds to the other two. And you're gonna bake those in a preheated 425 degree oven for about 20 to 25 minutes. Um, I left mine in a minute or two too long, but as you can see from my awkward bite, they were delicious. David had one as soon as he got home and they're a winner. We'll definitely be making these again. Hi friends. First, thank you for suffering through a video of me doing a voiceover. Um, I hate those. They are the hardest for me, but it's my own fault because I ruined my footage that I had. So, but the reason I wanted to get here at the end was to say thank you. Um, as of editing this video, I hit 200 subscribers. Now I know, in YouTube land, that is absolutely nothing. But to get to there from one video <clears throat> in one week just means the world to me. And not only that, the comments. You people have just been so kind to me, whether you love everything about the room makeover I did or not. Um, everyone's words have been nothing but kind. Um, and I appreciate it and it means so much to me. So to say thank you, I wanted to give away a $50 Amazon gift card um, just to show my appreciation. I never thought I would be brave enough to put myself out there and, and make videos and it turns out I'm having a lot of fun and you just make it even more fun. So leave a comment down below um, let me know how you found me. I will, a week from today, or a week from the date of posting the video, um, I'll do a random drawing and I'll post it in a short and then I'll comment back to you and let you know that you won and we'll get in touch with each other and I will send you a $50 gift card. So, thank you all again so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.